What's up everybody? Chris here, you join Off Road. I'm road testing this 2021 E350 BT Cruiser today. It's been raining here for a few days, so it's dirty and I apologize. So, normal stuff for this, six inch lift, 33 inch Toyo AT3s, custom spec springs front and rear. This thing drives amazing. Got a 285-70-17 Toyo AT3 up front on an American Racing Black Baja wheel. Went with a different axle setup on this. We originally had a stage for a stage or a set for a stage three front axle, but due to constant supplier issues getting those parts, um, we needed to get this thing built, and so we switched it to a stage two with the uh, hub and brake upgrade. So it still has serviceable wheel bearings. It's got the big SSBC eight piston calipers and uh, the slotted rotors. So I, I get this question a lot, but seat of the pants, you know, I've got one rig with this setup. I've got another one with the RSC um, stage three setup. There's really not a, a difference in braking performance between the two. With the stage three, you get a bigger bite, more leverage. I'm sorry, more leverage from a bigger rotor with less bite. With this setup, you get more bite with less rotor. About the same. Up front, we've got our FB002 all aluminum front bumper. Only upgrades were the Warren Winch, the Fairlead, and the Factor 55 Thimble. I already talked about the axle, stage two with hub and brake upgrade, 456 gears, Detroit True Track. All of that fun stuff. There you can see a single Fox 2.0s, track bar bracket. Track bar, that's another thing I get asked a lot. Guys say, well, why don't you need a track bar with leaf springs? Um, if you drive one of these with and without it, you can definitely feel a difference. I can feel a difference immediately if it doesn't have a track bar in it. Um, it prolongs leaf spring bushing life and steering component life. You know, so there's a lot of weight on these things. And when you're turning without a track bar, um, you're putting stress on all those components, which is just going to wear them out quicker. They drive fine. We drive them, you know, 20, 30 miles without the track bar. And, you, you know, um, you can feel the difference, but it doesn't hurt anything. We like for the springs to settle before we put the track bar in it, so nothing's in a bind. Even though our drag link and track bar angle are pretty flat. So, some little tech geek stuff for you. Swapped out the grill for a black Ford grill with some smoked amber LEDs. Uh, this is a 2021, so it's got the 7.3 Godzilla with the 6-speed, six 6R140 six behind that. And we've got a flanged NP1128 transfer case. Custom 1350 CV front drive shaft, and the rear has a two-piece uh, where we shorten the front half and use the stock carrier bearing to the rear. Out back, we've got our machine 17-inch Dodge wheels with a 255-80-17 Toyo AT3. Kept the stock rear sway bar and just used our direct mount sway bar links, similar to the front, for optimal handling. That is it. No other extras on this thing or goodies. It's a really beautiful RV. I love the colors on it. No more chrome. And it looks good. So, I said it's a BT Cruiser. Forgot the model number is... I don't know, because the sticker's gone. So, if you want to see an interior tour, just Google BT Cruiser. And there's some RV professionals that will give you a glorious tour. Uh, front Helwig Sway Bar, I think I forgot that. Just had a glance at that. So, yep, that's it for this one. It's ready to go home. Thanks for watching, as always. If you don't follow us on Instagram and Facebook already, please do. And if you got any questions, leave them in the comments or shoot me an email, chris at ujointoffroad.com. Also check out our uh, page on the website that is dedicated just to the RVs. Have a great day.